So I'm gonna make this sound. And the sound is originally from this video. And I'm also gonna show you how to make this. Timestamps are all over here if you wanna jump to whichever sound you want. But I've also hidden a game-changing technique that will change the way you approach sound design. I don't know, probably not that game-changing, but you know, YouTube likes it when I say stuff like that. For that first sound, we're gonna use Serum. And I'm gonna show you how to make this sound from beginning to end. So first thing we're gonna do here is do a technique that I like to call manual unison. That lets us have this super saw sound but it's a lot cleaner. Serum is a wavetable synthesizer, meaning it uses wavetables to make the sounds, and uh, it's a little pricey, but if you have a similar synth like Vital, which is free, you can follow along as well because they have most of the same settings. So we're gonna go through oscillator A, and we're gonna pick the basic MCB wavetable. Oscillator two, let's do the same thing. Unison up to two for both. But let's turn the detune down a little. And we'll turn the random down as well so it doesn't get phasey. And we're gonna put the phases on opposite sides, kind of like that. And by turning the random knobs down and oppositing the phases, we have basically determined a specific start point for the oscillator. That means we're offsetting the starting point just a little bit so that it doesn't phase cancel itself out. Let's have a listen. Sounding a little thin. I don't know if I like that. So here's where the manual unison comes into play. The way unison works is normally you would drag this up and get a lot of detuned versions of the same sound, but we're gonna do it manually by detuning oscillator B and we're gonna do that with the fine knob here. So we're gonna bring that up to 48 and listen to what it does to the sound. And now we have a really, really nice detuned unison sound, but it doesn't sound as wishy-washy as if we were to bump the unison up like that. Next, make the sound a little more plucky. So we'll do that in envelope. I like around 600 decay and everything else at zero. And that's still not plucky enough for me. So I'm gonna take this little middle guy, drag it down. You can experiment with these two knobs for maximum pluckiness. And now a little bit of noise on top. High passed. So this one here. has a very subtle high end. You'll hear that better once we go into the effects tab. A few too many lows happening in the sound. So we're going to do a high pass filter. Send both oscillator B and the noise through it. And bring the drive up a little. I don't like that many lows, so let's bring the cutoff a bit more. And now you're starting to get that characteristic lead sound. Now we can add a bit more articulation with this, giving it a more interesting sound. Add to the pluckiness in this section down here with the portamento. I'm gonna turn the always on so that every time the note hits, the portamento effect happens, and we're gonna turn up the portamento, listen to how that sounds. Very cool, and then we can adjust it even more by turning this curve to like minus 25%. And there she is, and that's that. Now we're gonna add some effects onto this to give it a bit more life. First thing I'm gonna add is distortion onto the hard clip mode. And we're gonna do something a little uh, unconventional with it. Turn the drive all the way down because all this is doing is hard clipping the sound so it's not getting too loud. But don't worry with all this lost volume, we're gonna bring it right back with the compressor. We're gonna turn it to multiband mode and make it a sort of OTT. Gain up. So that's louder. Now watch your volume here because this is about to get loud. Once we bring the threshold and the ratio down, it's gonna get even louder. So around there. And now the reason why we use the compressor to bring up the volume is because it's got these like little low end things coming from the envelope and the portamento and that compressor is really bringing that out. We'll turn the uh, ratio down to make that low end bump and not as strong. You hear the difference? 
next thing we need to round the sound out a bit more. I know we took away all of those lows with the high pass filter, but we're gonna reintroduce them back. Sound design is fun, right? We're gonna reintroduce those back with an EQ. First thing we're gonna do, switch it to a, uh, what, is it? what is this called? Bump? What's the bump EQ called? Bell? I don't know the proper terminology. We're gonna pick that one, volume up, make it a little wider with the Q. And we're gonna hone in around 700, 800 hertz. And this is to bring a bit of that mid range back. And we're gonna do a second one, this time for the high end. Same kind of settings. So you can hear without it, this is how thin it sounds and it fills out the sound a bit more when you turn the EQ on. I think I high pass it a bit too much here with the filter so we can bring it back down. But this isn't all like exact. This is stuff that you can kind of adjust as the sound goes on because you will also be incorporating them within whole songs. So these are two settings that you can fiddle around with to get them to fit. I kind of like that. I think that's a good, that's a good balance. And here's the final little trick that I like to do. So you'll notice in the original sound that it's got this really cool swell effect. And that's achieved with the reverb filter here. So turn on the reverb filter. We can leave all of these settings normal or you can adjust them to how you like, but essentially what we're doing is automating this up. But we need to tame it. It's a little too much when we, when we automate this up. So turn it up halfway, take our envelope that's used to control the volume. So we're going to drag it over here and then take this, drag it all the way down until it's red. Next thing we're going to do, bring the mix all the way back down and then map a macro onto this. So now when you're in your Ableton or whatever you want to automate the reverb swell, you just automate this up. With the envelope doing that downward hit, it's not as messy when you bring the reverb up. Also, I've got some post-processing on the lead that makes a big difference as well. That's before and after. Now I'll walk you through what all of these are. First one here, Wombo Combo. It's an extra layer of compression to kind of tame the sound before we run it through some effect chains. First effect chain I got is a parallel delay. This delay adds a metallic sound to it. And that's made by putting a delay on, turning it off sync mode, turning the feedback up high, and then shortening the time. In theory, you would be turning this knob. Until you get an effect you like. I'm turning the dry wet down here so that it's not completely mixed in so that it's not overtaking the original sound. And then on top of that as well, I've done it as a parallel delay. And you make that by right clicking on the top of the name, doing group, clicking this, and then going create chain. And that gives you a dry signal and a wet signal. So it's almost like this knob, but we can turn this down so that the effect is not as strong. And that's the reason I did that. And then to get that really characteristic bite to the sound, overdrive, and I keep all of these settings to default and I just move around this little dot until I hit those, hit that EQ response perfectly so that it really hits that spot. So it's a distortion, but it's based off of certain uh, frequencies. You can fix the character of the sound with that. And with two, it really gets that kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's that like, <laughs> so it, it, it's got this kind of like sound to it, like, kind of like a honk. And these two overdrives together, they hit that like frequency spot and then accentuates the honk. Trademark that. Accent the honk. Uh, this compressor, not doing anything. Literally not doing anything. Don't know why it's there, but you know what? Sometimes you have effect chains and you're trying stuff and stuff doesn't do anything and it's still there. Hallmark of a pro producer. So don't feel bad if you have stuff that you don't know what it does. <laughs> and then final two things for mixing. Mid side EQ. 
You can switch to a mid-side EQ by just going here and hitting mid-side mode. And all this is doing is taking away all of the low end from the sides of the sound. So if this is a wider sound because we did the manual unison with the oscillators up here. And we want to make sure that it stays clean in the mix. So I am switching to side mode. Just doing a straight up low cut EQ and then just moving it up so that there's no low end in the sides portion of it. That just cleans up the song a lot more. And then one last EQ, cutting off even more low end and giving it a little bit of high end. It's not too much to, to squawk at here. Very basic sound, very basic processing chain, but close enough. But before we get to the next sound, I want to give a shout out to this video sponsor. Don't just let your music sit on your hard drive unreleased. Even if you're going for label support, you got to prove that your current music is able to catch traction on streaming platforms. And a friend of the channel, aka this video's sponsor, DistroKid, makes this incredibly easy. In case you don't know already, DistroKid allows you to upload your music to online stores and streaming services. This means Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, Tidal, and more. And if you make EDM, for a little bit extra, you can hop on Beatport as well. With DistroKid, you get the power to have full control over the masters you send, all of the art you post, and you get access to free marketing tools like Hyperfollow, which gives you one link for your fans to both pre-save your release and put all your store links. Of course, a distro kid never takes a cut of your earnings, and unlike labels, you get to keep all the rights to your music in perpetuity. What the heck does that mean? That means forever. A label said that to me once and I got confused. All this for only $22? Now nah, I'll do you better. DistroKid's giving me a discount that you can use, so you should release that song. Get 7% off your first year of DistroKid using my VIP link and you'll be all set. The next sound sounds like this. Now with this sound being a little bit more complex, and I want to avoid this video devolving in, into either that slow, now we turn this setting to this, or like speed running what you got to do so that I keep your attention, but it's too fast for you to keep up. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to leave each page of the synth on screen for a few seconds and you can pause, pause and copy down each knob. Literally go to the each knob and copy each setting down. So afterwards, I'm going to show you some important settings that really change up the sound and the stuff you want to look out for, especially if you're learning sound design. This is pause number one. How's your day going? Having a good one? All right, here's page number two. And we got to scroll down for this, all right? So I'll stay here, and then we're going to scroll down, stay in here, scrolling down. All right. And then this is the one you want to pay attention for, the matrix, because this shows you what everything is mapped to. So pause here. There we go. Now here, envelopes aren't doing anything, and the LFOs look like this. Make note of the rates and all of these buttons here. They will be different for each one. LFO5 is actually not doing anything. You can leave that. Okay. Uh, some important characteristics of this sound it is an FM synth. So that means oscillator V is actually muted and is being fed into oscillator 1 here and it's set to FM from B. And that gives that distinctive metallic sound. In order for you to get that kind of movement, a lot of things are being mapped to LFO number one. If you look into the matrix, we have one, two, three, four, five, five different settings mapped to LFO one. For any sound you wanna check what it's set to, you can just right click the LFO and see exactly where it's going. And on the synth, you'll see these blue lines showing what's being affected and how much it's being affected. So turning it off or bypassing it, you literally can't hear anything. Because one important thing that the LFO affects is the level of the volume. If it adds that pluckiness and articulation to the sound. So let's bypass this. You can hear it's nothing. But if we turn it up, you hear how that changes the sound. Bring that back. 
LFO1, another important thing that it's mapped to is the EQ. That really distinctive attack that you hear is coming from this EQ bump right here. You can see it moving slightly, but let's bypass that. It sounds a little thin. It doesn't have that like punch to it and mapping it to the same LFO that you would do the volume. You, you have this like, this almost vocal quality to the synth that can add a lot of character to it. And you can move this around to get different voices. But because this was a support synth, I wanted it to be more on the low end and add just a bit more punchiness. So when we layer it with the lead, you can almost hear that little punch right at the beginning there. And honestly, a lot of this sound is a little bit lost in all of the processing as well because it is just a support sound. When I turn all of the processing on, I've got a similar chain where I'm doing Wombo Combo, which is OTT and Saturator, and then the same overdrive trick to add distortion and accentuate certain frequencies of the sound. And then the most important thing is this EQ. This EQ is actually taking away a lot of the high and low end but it really shapes it into this pluck, but it's got a bit of like dirtiness to it. It's just a support layer. So I'm not really too particular about how much it sounds like too crazy because that's like half the reason why I just pause the screen and just like, just copy these settings down because Spoiler alert, I did not make this sound. Oh my gosh, Ash, but how do you know how all of this stuff works? Well, personally, I like the assembling of sounds and creating more of a whole song than getting super meticulous with my sound design. But if you do want to go down that path, but you don't know where to start, here is the game changing trick that I've been using to help like improve and learn my sound design. If you're like me, you might have a subscription to one of these sound libraries. Now, one thing you can do is if you know what kind of sounds you're looking for, you can actually, rather than search in samples, you can search in presets. That's right. So I've got a bunch of these here. These are a great way to use up a lot of your splice credits. And even if you're like, damn, I don't wanna spend all my credits now, you can do a little search. Let's say you go to um, one of the goats, Fabian Mazers here, and you don't even have to download it right away. You can just click this like, and you don't spend a credit. And then next time you're feeling more inspired and you're in actual music making mode, you click this likes part here, you go to presets and oh my gosh, look at that. They're all there. And since it's serum, you can change a bunch of it and they're really easy to load in. We just take the preset and you just drag it in top there. And then you go into matrix and you look at what it's modulating. So that when you start making your own sound you have an idea of what to change. So big things are stuff like volume and warp modes, filters, and then adding modulation to certain effects. And you, you just look through it and you go, okay, that's a cool sound. Uh, let's, let's learn how to make this and then try making it from scratch. Copy it, make a new track, copy all the settings and then do that over and over until you get a good idea of like, okay, this is how to make that sound and it's become second nature to you. That's personally how I've learned sound design. That's how I've become a little bit more knowledgeable in how you can use Serum or Vital to your advantage, but you, you gotta take it upon yourself to learn it. Hopefully that helps you with your music. Do you have any tricks to learn sound design? Do you enjoy it? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Also, thank you so much for sticking with me as I haven't been as active with this channel with streaming or uploading videos. And without getting into too much detail, it's because I've been having a lot of health issues. Shout out to everybody on Patreon who is financially supporting me or literally saving my life. And hopefully it'll be over soon. We're on the path to recovery. Don't feel bad if you can't financially support me leaving a comment, liking this video, subscribing to my channel. That helps me out so much and it's all free as well. I will be back to uploading really soon. I have a lot of cool stuff happening behind the scenes as well. We'll be back with streams and thank you for watching. Now go make some bangers.